Hi, I'm G. Craig Lewis, uh, here with another episode of The Exposition. And I just want to thank you all for all of your comments and uh, all of your support uh, as we come and bring this show to you. Um, we're here at Adamant Believers Council where we film this, and I just thank God for the crew and everyone involved to make this possible. So um, today we're going to be talking about a very important subject. Uh, we're going to be talking about church hurt today. And I want to, you know, specify, we're not talking about people who uh, are using church hurt as an excuse to not go to church or just using it as a crutch or that kind of thing. But I'm talking about people that have actually been hurt by leadership of church or, or by something that may have occurred in church that maybe wasn't biblical or a situation that was mishandled or, or whatever. Uh, we're going to be discussing that today to try to help people get a better understanding of of uh, how to get forgiveness or how to forgive and move on uh, so that this doesn't become a bitter root and uh, many be defiled according uh, to the scripture. So today I have with me our crew, which is uh, Jay Bryan. What's up, Jay? What's up, Pat? And uh, Carmina Barnett. You doing all right? I'm great. Yeah. All right. So we'll be talking about church hurt today. So then we got to start at the beginning. What are some of the things that are happening in these churches that are causing people to say they have church hurt? Um, you know, Carmina, I think the, the, the first thing, which is very important, um, is we would have to, thank God we have pastor on set, um, is we have to acknowledge that hurt leaders hurt people, right? Um, unfortunately, so let, let's just go to the Bible on this. Um, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Which simply saying that if I'm hurt as a leader, um, I can't use that, or I can't lead you from that void. Mm -hmm. Or I can't lead you from that problem, because what'll happen is, whatever I'm going through, I'll transfer to you, and then we just have a congregation of people who are dealing with the same thing or a similar thing. And then we, we try to align grace with what we want it to be based on what we're going through. Um, and, and the Bible speaks to that clearly. Um, but what, what say you, Pastor? How well, you it, it's, it's gonna, it, the Bible also talks about many being defiled by it. Right. Like you just said, mm -hmm. um, I think there's too many churches. Can I yeah. just say that? Yeah. There's too yeah. many churches. Speak on it. Speak on uh, it. Too many people are pastoring for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. uh, too many people are trying to pastor a church without properly pastoring their home. Hmm. That's the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. uh, they get mad at a leader, they go start a church. Mm -hmm. Get mad at someone, go start a church. Uh, or they just want somewhere to go, they start a church. Right. You know, or they look in an area and say, hey, there's no church in this area, let me start one. Mm -hmm. But they don't consider the qualifications of it, they don't consider what it will take, uh, what God expects, to whom much is given, much is required. Yes, sir. And uh, they don't understand that there has to be a grace on your life to pastor. Mm -hmm. OK. And so all of these things add up to the fact that we are dealing with a generation of people who want microwave type leadership or microwave uh, situations where things happen instantly. Mm -hmm. They want to go from I just got saved to now I'm a bishop <laughs> and download their license off phonydiploma.com <laughs> and automatically have credentials. And then they want to come and challenge you right. with something that they you know, and I'm just going to say they saw on YouTube, basically. Yeah, People think that YouTube is research. Mm -hmm. uh, they think that they can uh, just pastor just based on what they've seen on YouTube. They can be a phenom. They can boost, you know, th their brand or everything mm -hmm. from the video channel. And they don't go through the proper uh, uh, making of a pastor the trials and tribulations, God teaching and testing, the time spent, you know, mm -hmm. when we uh, released the video on the Hebrew Israelites, you know, I'm, huh. I, I just got, you know, I'm getting thousands and thousands of them challenging me saying, I don't know the word. Mm -hmm. I'm a student of the word. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been doing this for 30 years. Right. They're, what they believe hadn't even been around that long because <laughs> YouTube isn't that old. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When I started, there was no YouTube. I did real research mm -hmm. uh, and I know how to rightly divide the scriptures. So for a two year vet to approach me and tell me, brother, you're right. wrong. You don't know the scriptures, you this and that. And you haven't been tried and you haven't been tested. Mm -hmm. That's why you're so angry and can't sleep at night 
and I'm sleeping like a baby because <laughs> I believe and I know what I know right. and what you say isn't going to change that and that's why people are so upset so we're dealing with a whole generation of people like that who right. just want to jump up and do something right. and they're not real they don't really have the grace on their lives or they want to jump up and do it and pastor and lead and their own family don't follow their message Right. And, you know, dude, how are you going to lead somebody and you can't lead your house? Man. You know, so a lot of people pastor for that very reason. Mm -hmm. Just because they can't lead their home, they want to lead other people's home. Well, let me ask this question. <clears throat> Why can't people, we go through stuff in our everyday life. We go through stuff at work and we just get past it and keep going. But when it comes to church, it seems like we can't forgive and we can't move on from it. You know, I, um, you know, I. I was, you know, raised in the church and, and I, I've seen it all. I've, I've experienced a lot of it. Um, and I think what happens is if it becomes too much of your life. And what I mean by that is the action of church or what we made it to be, okay. which is the bumping, the music, the praise and worship, or even all the extra theatrical things we've added for a source of entertainment. I think that if that become your livelihood in a sense where it's connected to who you are once you walk outside of wherever place you're meeting um, is where it can be like an extreme detriment to not only leadership and a pastor would deal with that, but even from a person um, sitting in, in the audience, right? So um, we, we, we use church as reality. Uh, so when a church lets you down, then you feel you have no other refuge. So that's a license to just go bonkers, if you will. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in a church and this is where I get my validation, now, um, let's make a distinction. We're not talking about your validation in Christ. You need to be validated by the creator, right? We need to be validated by, by him. We're talking about validation in church. So, for instance, I get the opportunity by the God, grace of God to serve the youth here, right? So if I walk outside of here and everybody knows me as a person that serves the youth and that's it, not knowing me by my job, not knowing me by other things I've done in my personal community, not just by... And let's this, this present day and time, I think it correlates, right? We, we see all of the marches. We see all of these people who gather together for different causes and different purposes for a season or for a time of notoriety or whatever the hot topic is. Mm -hmm. And then you don't see them for two or three years unless another thing comes around. It's the same concept. Yeah. Okay. So if I can walk into a church and, and a, a pastor exhorts me as a leadership, uh, in leadership or in, in some form or fashion, I, I have a... a uh, a role in the church okay. and and that becomes me meaning like I have nothing else outside of here mm -hmm. then that, that becomes the issue so once the pastor says something let's just say speaks directly against what I'm using the church platform if you will for then I don't have anywhere else to go because I've made the church lifestyle mm -hmm. who I am versus just who God created to me created me to be which is my purpose yeah um, I think we see a lot of that and that's something that we need to pay attention to well and then people use the church for that identity right so it's not just it was you know it, it came over time a lot of people target the church for positions right you know people come here and the first thing they say oh uh, how do I get on the praise team I said well just because you ask you'll never right you know because nobody gets to sing that that wants to sing. that wants to sing right and they'll, they'll say hey man I can play music or whatever and we've even had people that were in position and when they didn't get the proper validation, they left the church, left. Yeah. you know, so they weren't here for the word anyway. Mm -hmm. They were here for that validation. And that's because going back to the home, it, it, when people are validated at home, they don't have to seek outside sources of it. Right. They don't have to outsource that validation anywhere. So mm -hmm. uh, that's been missing. And then I think uh, back to your, you know, your question as far as forgiving and moving on. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, a lot of leaders that may make mistakes or may make errors in judgment and different things, it's hard a lot of times for them to uh, repent to people. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people can't move on because they were never repented to mm -hmm. and they're waiting on someone to say, I'm sorry, right. which we know they may never say that and you still have to move on. Right. You mature and learn. You know, it's only you're only responsible for you saying I'm sorry right. and you can't force nobody to say they're sorry. Right. But I'm saying that a lot of leaders won't say it out of arrogance and pride. Um, you know, uh, they're, they're so lifted up in the church that they feel if they show a sign of humility on that level, they've made a mistake and the people will stop looking 
to them right. as a God or as a great or as a great one. Right. And these folks got it all wrong. I mean, um, the Bible tells us, you know, that that Peter, when he was coming up to uh, Acts 10 and 25, when when Cornelius came up to him, Cornelius mm -hmm. kneeled before him. Now, I've seen folks kneel before pastors in church and. I saw one dude kneel and hand the pastor a toothpick. And, mm -hmm. and I've seen people bow down and kiss rings. Bow down yeah. and all of this Catholic stuff, which yeah. that's all Catholicism, which we know Catholicism is, you know, Antichrist. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the stuff has bled over into the church. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But Cornelius came up to him and tried to kneel. And Peter said, hey, man, get up. You know, the scripture actually says Peter took him up and said, stand up. I myself am also a man. man right. I'm just a man. Mm -hmm. Peter? who the Catholic Church calls St. Peter, right. who the pulpit chair that are in church is now is a derivative of the yeah. throne of Peter or Peter's seat. Yeah. Uh, this Peter wasn't like what they're trying to make him. He wasn't walking around in a robe and, you know, walking around with a cross in his pocket. Right. Peter was saying, hey, man, don't bow to me. I'm just a man just like a you, man. even right. though I'm a teacher, even though I can teach you, even though I'm writing a portion of the Bible, <laughs> I'm still a man. Right. And so Peter got rebuked in front of everyone by Paul. Sure that didn't did. change his letters of being written. That right. made him better. Right. So he, he was able to humble himself in that and fix that situation. That was an issue between the Jews and the Gentiles, the way he was behaving, and he fixed it. Mm -hmm. And that's what preachers and pastors and leaders have to realize, you know, we are human. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's a lot required of us to lead. But when we make mistakes, we got to go to people and tell them, you know, hey, I'm sorry. I, I, I messed up, man. I'm, I'm like uh, Peter said, I'm, I'm the man just like you. That's so right. I can make error. Can you forgive me? So that people that aren't mature enough to put that past them, mm -hmm. maybe they can move on and, and, and not have that in their minds. Absolutely. But then on the other side of that, you've got some that are extreme. So then they're saying like, well, I'm a sinner just like you. And I mess up and I practice sin just like you do. There's no difference between us. Talk about that. You because, talking about the preachers? Uh-huh. Right. Uh -huh. See, so the, the thing with that is, the, the, the truth of the matter is we are all the same. Okay. Right? But there are specific qualifications for leaders, for pastors. Um, and these, these qualifications, we, we can't deviate from what Scripture says. Um, is mandated for you to lead God's holy people. You have to be in a position, according to scripture, to where God can use you as the example for the people. H how, how are you a leader? And, and, and Pastor, let me, let me ask you this. I'm sure you have, to, um, you have to consider this, knowing that you call. Knowing you hear God's call in your life. Um, there is no true preparation for it. We walk by faith, not by sight. Um, we have, we, he allows us certain understandings, but a lot of it, um, and, and we've learned in the church, a lot of this, this walk is given to us, um, what is it, cinch by cinch, inch by inch? Inch by inch. So that we don't become puffed up in ourselves. Mm -hmm. God showed you everything immediately. Then, I mean, you walk around here like just cooling because, hey, you know what, in about 10 years, I'm going to be all right, whatever the case may be. So <laughs> as a leader, can you, can you speak to that um, how does that? Yeah, well, first thing I want to say is, you know, anyone who tries to use sin as a crutch and an excuse and say, you know, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm sinful. Here's my sin. Show their sin. You know, kind of like Preachers of L.A. and these different shows that right. came out, reality shows, people just showing you all of their sin, actually sinning for the TV, for right. the script. Right. They're putting sin in there to show you how human they are. Well, that person's not called to be a pastor or a leader. Can be. I mean, they're just not. Okay. They, they've missed so many of the qualifications. Basically, biblically, they're not qualified to lead. Okay. Um, so uh, as a pastor, though, you know, you're human. So you're tempted like other people. Sometimes you fall, those kind of things. Mm. But like I said in, in the previous uh, exposition, uh, a couple of expositions ago, God is judging our heart and it's the intent Attention. of the heart. That's okay? right. Amen. You know, David sinned and David sinned really, really bad. Had really, dude really killed bad. And all right. of that. <laughs> but because he was a man after God's own heart, his intent of his heart and God backed away from him and he wrote Psalms to bring God back to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was his, you know, uh, come in, come to come to God mo uh, moment in the Bible. But um, and, and when leaders do that, God will step away from you. Mm -hmm. You got to seek and get God back. Sure and that's painful. Mm -hmm. But God takes you through those things so you'll be responsible for what you're carrying. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and not that you're going to be perfect, not that you're going to fall. But 
uh, Paul also said that, uh, or it, no, it was Peter that said, their God is their belly and yep. their glory in, in their, their shame. shame. Yep. So meaning the thing you should be ashamed of, mm -hmm. you're glorying in with that attitude, right. like I'm a sinner just like you, and hey girl, you know, I'll excuse me, Lord, forgive me, I'll be out of bub. You know, they, <laughs> That's, 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 you know, your God is, I mean, that's your, that's glory and your shame. Something right. you ought to be ashamed of, something that's wrong with you. Right. You should, there should be some shame there that would lead to repentance. There mm -hmm. should be, you know, you should be sorry to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And so you shouldn't want to promote that or broadcast that because you don't want to broadcast a stumbling block. Absolutely. And I've, I've questioned this too, especially going back to the, the TV shows um, that quickly fizzled out. Um, I never understood that why do we have to relate in sin so much? Mm. Why is that my focal point to prove to you I'm human or that I'm worthy of you wanting to serve or believe in my God? That we both could do wrong. I mean, we can do extreme wrong. So that's where we, that's going to be our commonality versus showing you that I, I do serve a forgiving God, but not only just a forgiving God, a God that will show me the right way. Mm. So the mistakes or the issues you may be experiencing right now I've done some of that. I've experienced some of that. But let me show you how it's come out of that based on the God I serve. Not, hey, I can sin just as, as much as you can sin so we can serve the same God as sinners together. That never made sense to me, especially from the TV platform. So you want to show us you have the big houses. You want to show us that you have the cars. You want to show us that you have the access of things, the jewelry and the, the jets and all of those things that are quiet now, but still very, very much so used for the on these bigger platforms. But why does that prove God to be real versus you just being alive every single day? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, Anybody but, but, can drive a car. Yeah, but it's because they're not leaders is what I'm saying. Gotcha. They've made themselves leaders. TV's mm -hmm. made them leaders. Mm -hmm. Music, in most cases, have made them leaders. And that goes back to the truth behind hip hop. It does. Music exalting somebody that shouldn't be leading. That's yeah, why right. Lucifer in um, Isaiah 14 and 11 got puffed up. Because Lucifer was trying to take a position that he wasn't qualified for. Amen. Dude, you're a musician. You better go blow your body <laughs> and hush. You know? Right, right, right. Play, right, right. play your pipes and shut up. Right. But no, Lucifer wanted to lift himself up like a god. But mm. dude, how are you god and you were made by him? Right. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So we understand that music thrusts people into leadership. Well, mm. the people we're talking about, they aren't true leaders because a true leader of God his main focus is, is going to be making people and himself more godly, right. more godlike or mm -hmm. Christian, which means Christ-like. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. I, me to be Christian, me to make Christians or make people Christ-like. That's my goal. And to make them better, make me better. That's right. my goal. So I'm never going to glory in shame and promote sin to show how ratchet I can be. Right. Man, I'm trying to get better than ratchet. You know what I'm saying? And Absolutely. I'm trying to teach others because the Bible has that requirement. Right. Amen. So I have another question then. Let's go extreme some more. So what about those that are saying, you know, church is dead. There's no more good churches out there. God is mad at the church, so it's just over. It's done. What about that? Um, you know, God created fellowship for a reason, right? I mean, it, let's go back to the beginning. He created man, saw that he was good. Then, oh, I'm sorry, and seen that he needed a, a help me. And he created the woman from man. That right there proves that God is about fellowship. Mm -hmm. He does not want us to be alone. So fellowship is a very key thing. So for those people who are trying to escape the fellowship aspect of being a part of the body of Christ, they're being led by a different spirit. Um, I, I'll use myself. So. Um, many years ago, I relocated my entire family here to Texas, right? Um, and it, a fearful thing. Ten when, years? It's been eight and a half years. Eight and a half, eight and a half years ago. Um, and I, I remember the, the mindset of not feeling like I knew what that transition period was going to be like. And, and, and I immediately got fearful. Not in the sense of fear, and the reverence fear. I didn't want to lose my connection to God. So it's, it's many different avenues that we have to make sure that we stay in fellowship. For instance, the true church perspective, right? Many people, especially from the EX Ministries audience, are very familiar with this. This is not to say you forsake fellowship, but this is to, why you're in prayer, seeking God to lead you somewhere with sound doctrine, with an integral leader that's, that's really tr uh, preaching the truth of the Bible. There are avenues that God will provide for you to make sure that your spirit and your soul is fed. Mm -hmm. um, so 
So number one, people definitely need le leadership. Um, every instance of a people group in the Bible had a leader and were Everybody admonished. Is. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. and, and were admonished to fellowship and build each other up. Hebrews 10 and 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the men of some have or is, but exhorting one another and so much more as ye see the day approaching. In other words, there's going to come a time where I need you, Sister Carmina, or I need you, Pastor G. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach a point in this, in this walk where I'm going to be weakened in my flesh. Yes, I have prayer. Yes, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, I know right from wrong, but I'm still in my fleshly form. So I'm going to need to be able to call my brother or pastor for counseling, right, and say, you know what? I'm going through something. Here's what I'm going through. And then in that moment, I'll need to be encouraged. Um, that w nobody, no man is above that. So um, that, so going back to what you're saying, th this whole concept where people are, are feeling like we can just change, uh, take church away because of what they see on TV or what they see popularized doesn't mean that the truth of what God wants to be done isn't being done um, outside of these media or these platforms or uh, things of that nature. And, and I mean, how do you take the church away or say the church is dead if Christ is the head of the church? So is Christ a bad leader? <laughs> the, church, the church only ends if Christ is the bad leader. Right. The body of Christ is going nowhere because it's the body of Christ. Body of Christ. So how does that end? <laughs> how end. does his body end? That's, that's ridiculous. So God is going to do what he's already doing. Right. He said in the Old Testament, I'm going to give you pastors. Mm -hmm. That will be about me right. I mean, and not about hard. the money, won't misuse you. I'm going to send those. Right. And then Christ comes, establishes the church, and then says the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Then they built the church in Acts, mm. showed you what the church looks like. Then Paul comes and tells you what the leaders should be like. He's teaching Timothy, telling him how the leaders should be, the deacons, how you set this thing up. Then he tells you how to give, how the money ought to be. Then he tells you how the spirit ought to operate in yeah. the building. He describes the church. So are we about to throw the New Testament away because we got hurt by a bad leader? <laughs> right. You can't do that. Right. So who, we're not the judge of this. Christ is the judge. Right. The seven churches of Asia, not one of them went away. Mm -hmm. He did not throw them away. Right. He basically, and out of the seven, six of them were ratchet extremely ratchet they were messed up <laughs> yeah. and christ himself judged them and, right. and he judged them from the position look y'all represent me so either y'all get it right i'm taking my candlestick and i'm gonna set it somewhere else mm. but he he didn't close the churches and say oh because y'all not acting right i'm just gonna have people start uh meeting uh uh, uh uh not meeting and just you know individualizing this thing and i'm just gonna personally give everybody like tony say the personal jesus experience <laughs> Well, then you become your own authority right. and you begin to make decisions because, you know, we all judge ourselves on a curve. Right. And this is the pastor's job to come in and take that curve away and basically say, thus saith the Lord for the people as well as himself. Right. So the church is going nowhere. People that say that are upset. And that's what we're talking about. Church hurt. Church right. hurt makes you say stuff like that because right. where well, they all just want your money. They all no, they all don't. I'm, we're sitting in one where that's not the case at all. So right. I'm telling you, they may not be on TV. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can get on TV in unless you're taking folks money. Right. But you know, there's a lot of churches out of there, a lot of men that haven't bowed down the bill. You just have to get before God and right. go hard after him. And I was telling the men and heroes, this is gonna be a long episode, I feel. Yeah, just prepare yourself. But I was telling the, <laughs> I was telling the, the guys and heroes, you know, some things that God or uh, Christ wants to do for us, we gotta go hard after him for. That's right. So we have to make sure sometimes that we have we have the hatred and the forgive the unforgiveness and different things in our hearts removed and taken care of right. before he would even show us a church. Right. Why would he lead you to a church so you can go in there and stink it up right. with your and, discord? And bring your crap. You right. messed up behind what happened in your last church. You got attitude. All you're doing is waiting on somebody that you can buddy up with so you can tell them mm -hmm. your experience in your old church. Right. You know, that's how I judge people. You know, people move down here just like you. Mm -hmm. You know, about 85, 90 percent of our congregation relocated okay. here from out of state. Or, right. You know, some even out of the country. Right. So we have a plethora of people here from everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. About 500 people just from everywhere. And I thank God for that. But a lot of people move here or come here. And the first thing they want to do is come to me and tell me how bad their old church was and their old pastor. Was. Right. But when they do that, right. I tell security, start watching them. Right. <laughs> right. 
And you know what's interesting? So having that experience um, is it, two things because um, and, and, and most people do contact um, ABC um, and its elders and, and, and our elders when it when it comes to this. But I, we've had conversations, Pastor. I, I was in that state where I was having different experiences mm -hmm. and I wanted to go the negative route. You would never let me do it. You would shut me down immediately and say, hey, whatever you need to go through, wherever you are, go through it and then make your decision from a a uh, positive or from a peaceful. a right place, right? A peaceful place. Don't make the decision and and you're dealing with um, strife or you're in a in a you know don't don't make the decision from that place because that that's where you will stay and then you will pick up and bring, like you just said and bring it here. So I I had to go, young man. I had to go through that, mm -hmm. sit there, learn my lessons, gain an understanding, and my move, my faith walk has been peaceful. Yeah. Yes, not 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 negating the bumps in the road in life right still got to mature as a man we still have mature as people mm -hmm. you still have to grow in faith all of that but in terms of the actual move me seeking a place to go where i believe god wanted me to be um i had to do that as well and i had to do it from a place where nothing no issues with my family no issues with previous church families no issues at all when it, when it came to that transition so i can i can testify to that's definitely the right formula yeah because bad if you're a bad church member where you are you disgruntled you hateful or whatever, when you come here, that's still in you. Right. And so it's best to get that worked out. I try to get people work that out. Uh, and, and then once you get healed, maybe God wants you to stay there. Maybe you can be a light. Maybe right. that situation, right. you just never know how it's gonna play out. Right. But I don't let people escape family and run away from stuff and all that. I don't let right. them do that because right. all you're gonna do is- This is not the is, church hurt refuge. Right, right. right. all you're gonna do is bring it, camp, right? bring it here. And then the minute you upset with me, mm -hmm. it's all gonna come out like we've seen and it happen so many times so many before. Times. Once you right. try to make people go and repent or do better with their old situations, mm -hmm. now they're looking at you funny. So, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's very important that people understand that so they'll, you know, uh, uh, not make emotional decisions that they may regret. Right. Make a good decision from a position of peace. Mm -hmm. And people always ask, man, how do you know when is the voice of God? How do you know when you ought to do that? The way I know is it's nine ways I know. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. If I can't find those things in it, then I know it's not the spirit of the Lord Amen. because those are the fruits of his spirit. He said, by this, by the fruit, you will know them. Know who? Know those that are his. Why? Because they're exhibiting the fruits right. of the spirit. Amen. I love it. We've got more on the way. Of course, the point of this whole conversation is to help people get past this church hurt. Right. So check us out. Go to the website, go to exministries.com, and we'll be back with more. We welcome you now to a true church perspective with Pastor G. Craig Lewis. So we're back and we're talking more about church hurt. And one of the questions I want to ask, so what about those that say the church is, or the body of Christ is people and not the building? So does that mean I'm the church without a church or what does that mean? <laughs> uh, it's, 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 an, it's an excuse um, for irresponsibility again, because what happens when you have to, when you have to show commitment, right? Um, what happens is, if you're if you're a spiritual leader calls a meeting, you're supposed to be there. Right. But if you have a certain rebellion built up, built up in you, if you have a certain root of bitter, bitterness built up in you, maybe because your father left or maybe because you had a bad experience on your, on your in your workplace with a, a horrible manager. You kind of want to get what you want to get out of how you get it when you want to do it on your own time. And that's just not how God works. Everything God is, has orchestrated is done in decency and in, in decency and in order. So the church is 100% in alignment with that. With that being the case, what do you call it? Hmm. When we come together, all three of us come together as a believer and we have a, a leader or a pastor stand before us, what do we, we are the church. So it, it's not about it. 
uh, about, for instance, this will be uploaded online, exministries.com, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that 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 substitutes the church. Right. You still have to go and be physically among your brother, and your, your brothers and your sisters, so that we can see each other, so we can feel each other in terms of what you go through, how you feeling. I'm encouraged when I see certain other other men. Our uh, pastor spoke of heroes. We're we're walking a walk. Um, most of us have never done before being heroes in our homes, pre pre priests, providers and protectors. Mm -hmm. Our wives are at home. Our, our wives are homeschooling our children. We need each other in terms of staying encouraged and making sure that we're all in different in parts of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're just starting because you just moved down here or you decided to take this faith walk with us. Right. You need to know somebody who's been doing it for eight years mm -hmm. or you need to know somebody who's been doing it for five years. Mm -hmm. And that's what the church is. So we can't walk away from God's assembly. Uh, establishment as it relates to um, coming together as the church, the fellowship. And it's just, it's, it's semantics is what it is. I mean, okay, we are the body of Christ and yeah, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So Absolutely. we're a temple we, and we come to a temple to fellowship. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always been a temple. Three or four come together. No, no. See, we, we believe in the house church. Well, we started in the house too. Right. We started in the house, got 20 people, too many people in my house. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We look for a small place we could rent. We started renting that. Then we got, and we ultimately ended up here. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Well, they, it, we're here by necessity. Right. Okay. We didn't go to the bank and say, Hey, uh, we need to, we need, we need some money because God has given me a vision of a whole lot of people. No, mm -hmm. we moved in because we didn't have room. Mm -hmm. We had 300 people sitting on the floor yep. in our last building. We sure okay? did. So we had to move. And, right. and, and that's all it is. It's just a play on words. I mean, what do you call, I mean, I mean is your home when you say home, are you talking about your family or are you talking about the house, <laughs> right. the building? The Bible tells women to be keepers in their keepers of their home. Right. Is it talking about keeping their husband and the children? <laughs> They're the people. Or yeah. is it talking about keeping the building? Right. It's all just a play on words. So people use that as, a, as another excuse mm -hmm. because they've been hurt by church or hurt by church members. And now they don't want a fellowship or they want to you know, um, uh, uh, be alone or be isolated. Let me tell you something. There's a danger with isolation. The Bible says iron sharpeneth iron. Okay. Sure so does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. Do you know what Amen. that means? Sharpening the countenance of his friend. That means that you got somebody to check you. Yep. Checks and balances. Yep. These folks get on YouTube. Believed in Jesus, believed, loved the Lord, everything. A yep. year later on YouTube, now they believe the earth is flat mm -hmm. and they believe that black people are superior than all other races. All right. This came from them watching YouTube. YouTube. Okay? Yep. Nobody to check them. No checks and balances. They stayed away from the fellowship. But then they hear, you know, like people at our church or different ones are so strong and sound in what they believe. They know, mm -hmm. hey, that's because the word is rightly divided. Yep. They have a leader or a shepherd, as the Bible says, watching for their souls. How are you going to just disavow yourself of God's leaders that mm -hmm. he gave? He said he gave some apostles, some pastors, some prophets, some teachers, some evangelists. How are you going to just say, I don't need any of that? Right. Why did he give it? It's for the uh, it, it, it's for the, the building of the body, the perfecting right. of, of the saints yep. of right. us. Yes, perfecting. Sir. That's perfecting of the imperfect. Well, God is saying we need that. So you can't just jump up, get mad, go start your own thing, grow all your uh, hair out and put on a dashiki <laughs> right. and say, hey, man, I've discovered something. I went on a, I went on a quest. And no, you need somebody to sharpen your countenance. I mean, you need somebody to get in your face and say, bro, you going crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and Pastor Nick, let me ask you this. And, and can't we like correlate that to the broken family, too, as well? I think so. I mean, because, again, thinking about the young people. We have this generation that we're experiencing, um, this godless generation that we're experiencing, and their, their lack of interest in going to church, um, largely due to the fact of everything we've talked about up to this point, um, especially dealing with the inconsistencies of what's being taught, or even if they pick up their Bible and they read the Bible, and what they're experiencing is totally opposite than what's in the Bible, then it's consistent with their homes being broken. Mm -hmm. It also pushes them away as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very important going back to you dealing with um, pastors being the husband of one wife, right? And being able to keep his home before he's, before, that's, that's the test before God promotes you to, to uh, lead his church. I, I think that's a, that's a, a, a really big issue that, that it appears that leaders are ignoring because we don't hear them talking about it at all. 
and then you want to win the children with methods and with, with um, ways of the world, whether it's the dancing or the music or even just attributing some of the things we see in pop culture, we want to adopt it in the church to keep their attention. Uh, it's all an inconsistent, um, uh, I guess, will, if you, if, if you will. What, what do you say to this? Well, I mean, if, 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 if that inconsistency is in the home, it's going to be in the church. So, like you said, you got to do things people. to try to attract them to the church. You wouldn't have to do that if the church was in the home. You see what I'm saying? So gotcha. if you had their attention at home and they believe what you believe and follow what you believe and were interested in what you what you believe, then mm. when you got to church, it would just be another place to do that. Right. You know what I mean? But in the home, they're not interested in what, what, what you're doing. You right. know, you singing gospel, they singing secular. Right. You know, you, you, you Holy Ghost <laughs> dancing and they, they twerking. Right. You know, so they're, they're the opposite of you. They don't, they, don't, they don't want what you have. And that comes from them seeing inconsistencies in you mm. that they can't explain. Right. If they see you say, I love the Lord, but you can't love your wife enough to forgive her and Man. you still divorce her, yeah. then that child is like, dude, you're supposed to be a Christian, but you don't love her enough. So something's wrong with this Christianity. Right. So then let me get on YouTube and find out what's wrong with Christianity. Exactly. Google YouTube and say, what's wrong with Christianity? Well, it came from the pagans. It came from Constantine. It came from the Catholics. It this and that and this. No, it didn't. They all put stuff in it and mm -hmm. tried to corrupt it. But Christian means Christ-like. Christianity, they were called Christians in Antioch. Right. Before all of that, Christianity just means Christ-like. So that's if it. we are Christ-like, that's our religion of Christianity. So just because folks corrupted it, uh, tried to corrupt it, don't mean they actually corrupted it because it's Christ's body. Can Christ's body be corrupted? Absolutely not. Thank no. you. <laughs> and see, that was gonna be my next question because it seems like now I'm seeing so many people dealing with this church hurt and, and they're falling away. And is it because there's been such a rise of the erroneous doctrine and things like that that are causing them to experience all this hurt? Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm about to preach. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting on that question because, yeah, um, erroneous doctrine is a big deal. We really need a whole segment uh, or a whole show on the erroneous doctrine so I can actually go uh, deeper in it. But you can listen to the True Church Perspective. I'm in that all the time on right. our podcast. You can download that at exministries.com under the sermons. But uh, I do want to touch on a few points here uh, that I want to make uh, concerning erroneous doctrines uh, because they flourish. Erroneous doctrines flourish under certain conditions. These are the conditions that a lot of pastors bring into the church. Right. When you bring these conditions into the church, it becomes a birthplace for these doctrines to be born, tolerated and come in and confuse, you know, the, uh, the membership. Uh, so I got one, two, three, four, five. I got five points. So let me make these real quick. Five different um, uh, issues that cause erroneous doctrines to flourish. Politics, pride, Jezebel, failure, and greed. Okay. Mm -hmm. These are the things that show up in church and they, they, they cause these erroneous doctrines. And when I say erroneous doctrines, just stuff that's not in the Bible that people are doing and thinking that it is in the Bible right. or they think it is of God when it's not. Okay. Uh, politics, which is how, you know, if you go back and research, that's definitely how Rome got pagans and Christians to merge into Catholicism. Okay. okay. Catholicism is not Christianity. Okay. So when people, especially, you know, Hebrews and different ones tried to make them the one and the same, they're not the same. Not the same. Now, Pentecostals have adopted a whole lot of Catholicism and other denominations, uh, Baptist, Methodist, a lot of Catholicism they tried to adopt because the founding fathers of their beliefs brought those in. Right. But by no means is Christianity and Catholicism the same thing. This is the leaven of Herod that Jesus talked about. So when we talk about politics in the church, people running for office, you got to get people to like you. Anytime there's politics, you got to get people to like you. You got to please the world to be a politician, right? Yes, you do. You want votes. You got to get people to like you. Right. But once you bring that in, now you're getting the people to like you. So you have to preach a message uh, kind of skewed with compromise in order to make the mass accept you mm -hmm. or like you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a big uh, issue in the church. 
Um, and that's why Jesus warned against the leaven of Herod. Who was Herod? Herod was a politician that masqueraded as a Christian to the Christians right. and then a pagan to the pagans, right? Mm -hmm. And that's who Constantine was. He did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, these guys, Jesus warned the people and said, beware of their leaven or beware of what makes them rise. That's what leaven does. Right. Beware of what gets them popular or makes them rise. Mm -hmm. That's compromise, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, f to bring in Rome with politics and different things or the politics of Rome or the idea of politics like Rome, you're bringing a spirit into the church. OK, yes, I did a video called Mother of All Gods, uh, the Truth Behind Hip Hop Part 7, Mother of All Gods. And I showed you where all these things came from, where the clergy collar, the crosses, the, the all of the, you know, the, 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 the robes and the hats and the different things that they wear in church. They all came from Catholicism. Mm -hmm. And I warned the church way back then, I don't, I forgot what year it was, that if you bring those things in, if you bring in the garb, the liturgical symbolism and the pomp, mm -hmm. you also bring in the spirits with it. So you yes, bring you in pedophilia, yeah. homosexuality and idolatry. Great. And that's what the church is suffering from right now. Right. The same way the altar boys and the priests, the priests. Uh, uh, corrupting the altar boys the same way they were doing that. Now you got adjutants and armor bearers yep. and the pastors, you know, attracted to them and all of this. It's because man cannot receive that kind of worship, worship. from other men. That's not sanctioned by God. Amen. Okay. Yes, sir. So that's politics. Then pride. When men cannot embrace their own shortcomings and admit they need help, they become prideful and arrogant. This causes men to seek out beliefs that will lift them up high like God and give them prominence in the eyes of their congregants. This was the leaven of the Pharisees that yeah. Jesus warned them about. What's making the Pharisees rise? Mm -hmm. The Bible said everything the Pharisees do is to be seen of men. Mm -hmm. So when pride comes in, a pastor lifts himself up in pride. He can't be told what to do. And then he has a, you know, a domineering demeanor sometimes, or, you know, he ignores uh, sound doctrine right. and exchanges that for an opportunity to be big. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jezebel. This is, this is my favorite. When women lead men, mm -hmm. whether by teaching, pastoring, or even wives, they are not totally submitted to their husbands. Okay? <laughs> I mean, you can't be, uh, or when you're not totally submitted to your husband, it creates a perverted order in the church, which will lead to spiritual abu abuse and oppression because the female leader is out of place or uncovered. Yeah. So she's under the influence of something else other than God when she's uncovered. Right. That's why the Bible said a woman should have power on her head for the sake of the angels, meaning right. she okay. won't be controlled by something else. Right. Right. Jesus warned the church at Thyatira about saying uh, uh, by saying that the spirit of Jezebel will lead people into fornication. So that's what we're seeing a lot of now. Yes, we Even are. if they're not pastoring the church, they're pastoring through the pastor. Right. So the woman is up. She's leading. She's teaching men. She's doing these things in the churches. And it's causing this spirit of Jezebel to hurt a lot of people and lead them into fornication, lead them into divorce, lead them into situations that's really harmful for them. Mm -hmm. And this is where most of the church hurt that I've heard about, that I get emails about. It comes from under women leaders or women pastors all right yeah failure when a man cannot lead his home properly he may try to prove his worth or be validated by church members yeah. so when his kids ain't into him he wants the members to be into him when his own children or wife does not honor him or is not a reflection of his good leadership then he'll use the church to show others what he uh, uh that he is doing a good job this causes him to be hard to teach hard on his membership and in denial about his home. Mm -hmm. A man married to a Jezebel will never have his sexual and emotional needs met. So that's when he start going into the congregation to find folks to do that for him. Right. So this is just plum failure. If you're failing in the home, take a step back, sit down. Sometimes you might need to even retire, mm -hmm. but don't, <laughs> don't try to lead the church if your home is dying. Right. Deal with your home and then lead the church. OK. And then finally, of course, this is the most popular one. Greed. Yep. Greed is the breeding ground for erroneous doctrine, uh, probably more so than any of these, because folks will make up Bible stuff just to get money. Just OK. Get money. Financial gain and selfish ambition are driving a lot of churches today. Many teach 
the cursed with a cursed doctrine to people to make them give. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we know there's a blessing in giving. Don't get me wrong. There is a blessing in giving and though, and you're going to be blessed by what you give mm -hmm. and you're going to be blessed just like you give. Right. Okay. So all that's true, mm -hmm. but there is no curse of a curse. And, you know, Malachi uh, three is not talking to us in the new Testament. Paul right. said that we should, you know, give uh, as the spirit leads us or as we're led to, let to give. Right. And then giving 10%, there's nothing wrong with that either, okay? People, right. I know they say, woo, but that's the tithe, and the tithe is a curse, and the curse is a tithe. Is a... Dude, if you take 10% of your income for budgeting purposes, the church uses it for budgeting purposes, that's just 10%. Right. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whatever the percentage is, it's good for you as a human being to work God into your budget so that you can be consistent in what you give him. So that's, right. that's my outlook on it. I don't teach the tithing curse and all that stuff, but I do say, hey, find a number that's good that you can stick with just so you can budget and be consistent with it. All right. Mm -hmm. So all of these are the things that I've experienced as far as emails and people coming to me as a pastor and different things. Inside of all of these erroneous doctrines flourish. People adopt all kinds of crazy stuff because of these things. If the church is ever going to get back to what God or not, I want to say the whole church, because a lot of them aren't doing this, but the right. ones that are off, mm -hmm. they want to get back to where God really wants them. These issues, politics, pride, Jezebel, failure and greed have to be addressed first. Mm -hmm. And that way they can be in position to truly lead people. You Amen. know, it's funny, I, I've seen so many instances where people have been impacted by the points that you just mentioned, but there has to be a way to forgive. There has to be a way to, there are so many churches that are teaching sound doctrine. So how do we get off of the church hurt island and find these? You on island? I'm not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the biggest thing is to give what we've been given, okay. right? Which is forgiveness. Okay. We've all been forgiven of our sins. Um, I, I, you know, I've had to do it. Uh, I'm sure Pastor has had to do it. I'm sure you've had mm -hmm. to do it. You know, um, personal testimony again. You know, my father wasn't necessarily in my life gr growing up, but he's the, the closest thing to me now. And I learned that in the church. I learned that I had to forgive him in the church. Um, I learned that I had to honor him as my father, regardless of anything, mm -hmm. um, right here in the church. And the thing is, we have to forgive ourselves as well. So we have to forgive ourselves and we have to get, forgive those, whether it's a family member, friend, whoever, who's wronged us as well. Um, and then we got to get past what's been done to us. Um, and then ultimately that leads to we have to forgive church leaders. You know, I, I tell people all the time that I love the fact that we, we, we serve in a, in a church home where our, our pastor is so transparent. Mm -hmm. It reminds me and, and all that God has empowered him to do, that he uh, uh, leads him to do, I'm reminded consistently because of how transparent he is that he's a human being. Mm -hmm. So I'm never putting him on a pedestal where I can't, I can't see that he's human beyond what God is empowering him to do whenever he's doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Some stuff I've seen personally in terms of what God leads him to do and some stuff I've heard stories based on the things that he shares with the church, but he's human. So we have to be able to forgive in order to move on. So because you've seen something or because you've heard something, or because you've personally experienced whatever that may be, um, there is a there is forgiveness for all of it. Why? Because Jesus Christ died for that forgiveness, and and that's where I believe we should start at as a church. And and then you don't want to find yourself looking for a way to prove something to someone. Mm -hmm. So with unforgiveness, the Bible calls that a bitter root and says, "By that many shall be defiled." Right. You you don't want to be guilty of drawing hurt people to you because you're hurt. And that's all that'll happen. If you stay hurt, you're going to go look up things. I tell the, like I said in the last broadcast, your music chose you. Mm -hmm. Your music chose you based on your disposition. Right. So if you are hurting, Sade called you and said, listen to my music. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, you, you or in this day and age, Drake. Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I right. mean, if you, can't, if you keep falling and can't get up, then James Fortune called you. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just... All of these different artists out here are luring people with these issues. And 
That's why a lot of the songs now aren't even praising God and giving God right, glory. Just They're just about talking issues. about us. Yeah. And, oh, I couldn't pay my bills. Man, I was sick. I was so sick when I saw the Google commercial. How you gonna pay your rent? They used that. Man. And then I went and listened to the song and it had like 15 million views on YouTube. You That's know crazy. I wanted to go hide under something. <laughs> I was embarrassed yeah. because in that song, that whole song, how you gonna pay your rent? Work it out, work. That's all you have to say. The song too long. It just just say work. And why is all your money spent before your bills paid? That's, see, all your money spent. <laughs> see, somebody is not managing. But see here, like at this church, uh, this is what is being taught. Right. You know, every aspect of us as a man, as 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 women, as, as you know, in our homes and different things. You know, we teach the Bible's application on all of that. All right. That way, you know, we're not looking for something to fix some hurt that may be in us over here, but then mm. we leave this area over here totally, you know, undealt Ignore, right. with. We're not doing that. We're going to teach the balance of the whole thing. Mm. And that's what people need to realize. Your hurt is hindering you. If you're staying away from church, it's hindering you from getting that. So you're going to always have an imbalance. Even if you read the Bible all day, every day, mm. you know, I'm dealing with the Hebrew Israelites now. They can write themselves in any scripture. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't argue scripture with them. Right. They get the scripture and say, yeah, that's talking about us. Right. Well, how do you know it's talking about us? Because see, YouTube said, dude, <laughs> so I, 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 can't, I can't have that argument. So, dude, I don't even want to use the Bible when I'm talking to you because right. you're going to write yourself in every scripture and you're going to put a black face on everybody you're talking about. Right. I, I can't do that. You know, right. that's just, right. but that's a hurting person. Mm -hmm. A hurting person is going to always look for a way to feel better about themselves. Yeah. You don't want to stay on that path. You want to deal with that hurt. Mm -hmm. You want to forgive so you can exhibit the nine, there's nine fruits of the spirit to even prove that you are in Christ. Right. The love, the joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Right. Those are the things you want to make decisions based on instead of an angry or a, a, a bitter heart. Amen. All right. Well, we're at the end of this. I know it was a little longer, but man, yeah, I had to but, get this. But need it. Yeah, yeah. Because, need it. man, I get emails and, and text messages all the time, you know, and, and it's about pastors and hurting. Them. And I try, I don't make excuses, but I try to get people to realize, you know, imperfect people, uh, man, you just can't expect them to be perfect. They're going to make mistakes. Right. Okay. And you have to be able to forgive. And I mean, we have so many testimonies of folks. I mean, I got a guy sitting right there in the audience on his iPad. When he first got the ABC, he had a problem with me. Right. Sat me down. Dude, I got a problem with you. Mm -hmm. And now we like to very, very close. Right. Because right. we worked that out. He could have easily gotten his car, like a lot of people do, and left. And left. Well, he would have taken him and his family and gave them that disposition. Yep. So he wouldn't have even been able to reach his own family mm -hmm. because, hey, why would I even fool with this? I'm going to put the headphones on and get me some Drake. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Got another guy on the camera right over here. Had a problem with me because, mm -hmm. I, you know, he came down here the wrong way. I sent him back home. He went home, had a problem <laughs> with me. Came back, showed up one day, gave me $1,000. Say, here, man, I'm going to give you this money because I got a good job here. I came back the right way. I was mad at you at first, but then I realized that you Bless my life. Wow. We have testimonies at all times. That's forgiveness. Right. Right. Amen. And don't be crying on the cameras, y'all out there working. I'm talking about <laughs> that. But, <laughs> but that's, that's forgiveness. Now we all, close. we all love each other because Amen. they gave me a chance to show them, hey man, you know, I, it, I may seem a little creepy right now, mm -hmm. but you'll understand this later. You mm -hmm. know, just like you. You, yeah. you call me. You're the best example, really, because. I used to have to call you and say, Jake, no, don't do it. Jake, don't do this. Don't do that. Man, it took a long time. Then yeah. when you came down here, I didn't let you rap. Mm -hmm. I didn't put you over you. I didn't right. let you do nothing. Right. I said, let, let, let's turn you into a man first. Yep. Get you ready for this. Yep. Now look at what God is doing. God has gifted you and brought you to a place to where, you know, you're a great minister of the gospel. Mm -hmm. So these are things that leaders can do when right. they see us, you know, right. and they help you. They're not there to push you away and harm you. So anyway, let me get to the scripture because this is the biggest issue and this is why folks are hurt. And I'm, I'm just going to read a scripture. I'm not going to give you my normal summary. I'm going to let Paul give us the summary. First Timothy 3 and 2, he says, a bishop, which in this word it translates as pastor, because bishop and pastor is the same, same thing. thing. Catholic <laughs> or Catholicism made it different. Mm -hmm. But pastoring, a uh, pastor and a bishop are the same thing. Uh, a, a pastor then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, 
those are pretty much obvious. You can't have a harem of women, right. and then <laughs> and then you need to be blameless, meaning that you don't you you know you you, you do good business and you're not you know hiding uh, or, or being underhanded in any kind of way when you're right. dealing with different things. Uh, vigilant, sober, of course, we those are easy, and of good behavior, meaning you got to be able to act right, and a pastor has to be able to discipline himself mm -hmm. it's very important because paul has a scripture and says i bring my body up uh, under subjection yeah, so that when i have disciplined others mm -hmm. i myself won't be a castaway right. that's a requirement so you got to be able to put yourself on the fast you got to be able to know when you wilding yep. you got to be able to know when you out of control you got to be able to know when you need to drop the mic and go sit down Amen. Okay, I've done that at ABC. I dropped the mic and sat there. I didn't drop it because, right, you right. know, but put the <laughs> mic down. I need to take me three weeks or so because yeah. I got some stuff going on in my head and in my life that I need to deal with. Yeah. I mean, you got to be able to do that mm. as, as a leader. Okay, mm. so of good behavior, given to hospitality, a apt to teach, meaning you got to be able to hear God and you got to be able to hear someone coming to you, not a member, right. but another elder. The Bible says rebuke, not an elder. So all these folks rebuking elders, y'all in trouble already because well, the Bible says don't do that. You let mm -hmm. elders do that. God right. knows them, okay? So he knows what to do. So uh, apt to teach, not given to wine, nor a striker. I mean, you ain't out there fighting all the time <laughs> or, <laughs> uh, 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 or, or lashing out at the people is what the striker or uh, what the striker means. Not greedy of money. So you're not doing it for the money. You ain't teaching, abusing the people to get their money and, and, and all that kind of stuff. You got to be patient, not a brawler. You ain't out there wrestling and tussling with folks. Not covetous, meaning you're not watching other preachers and wanting what they have. That's the biggest issue. You're not following preachers and want what they have. Oh, I, I, I want cars like that. I want a house like that. So right. let me, you know, do, enhance my resolve so I can rush to that. No. One that ruleth well his, his own, own house, meaning you have to be in charge of your home. You're the head of your home, not your wife. You're the head of your children, not your wife. You're the head of that home. If you can't lead that home, you can't lead the church. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. Now, we know kids will be kids. Some of them may wild out a little bit, whatever. But the Bible says if you train them up in the way they should go, then things are supposed to work out. That's so, right. So, in your home, your children need to want to hear you preach. Right. If my kids didn't want to hear me preach, I'm not preaching no, to nobody else. Mm -hmm. So, they need to enjoy your message. They shouldn't be in church uh, uh, falling asleep every time you get the microphone. That's a bad <laughs> sign. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? He don't need to be a novice, meaning he just started doing this. He don't even know what he's talking about. Lest he be lifted up with pride and then fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are not saved or the world. Not that they love him, but right. man, he ain't got scandals out on right. him. You know right. what I'm saying? Preach. Lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil.